Most of you, when you look at your profile, will find that there is the work side, which is part one, and the self side, which is part two. <coughs> Left hand column, part one, work side, right hand column, part two, self side. Uh, that, that's wonderful because that allows you to be able to look at somebody not only in terms of their work judgments, but also their self judgments. Part one relates to what a person does and the judgments that they bring to the table in terms of what they do. Part two relates to who a person is and the judgments that they bring to the table in terms of self-affirmation, self-care, those kinds of things. Uh, I don't want to sound too much like Dr. Seuss, but who always drives what? That's why Bradley says it's more important to hire character than it is statistics. Who always drives what? Here's the problem in this room, and here's what several of y'all had questions about. Most everybody in here is weaker, and sometimes substantially so, on the self side compared to the work side. I don't want you to feel badly about that because that'll just make your self side scores go down more. <laughs> uh, but I'd love for that to be a catalyst for you to think about doing something about that. Because you have perfect scores, for the most part, that describe people that are committed and dedicated to taking care of roles, responsibilities, obligations, duties, home, church, community, stray dogs on the street. <coughs> but the scores would indicate that maybe you're not quite as good as taking care of what? Self. Taking care of yourself. And where do you think the greatest spread in terms of difference, where do you think in terms of professions and organizations, where do you think you find the greatest difference between work site scores that are way up here and self side scores that are usually more down here? In healthcare. I mean, it's just chronic in healthcare. And so we would hope that we would be able, as we move forward, to help create some individual development plans and some wellness plans. See, wellness is a judgment issue for the most part. Nobody made me eat that tiramisu. Nobody made me do that. I knew better than to because I'm trying to cut back, but my judgment slipped a little bit. So you see, health and well-being is a judgment issue. And we would hope that as we move forward with this program, that we'll be able to show you some things that will help you maybe get a conversation started inside your head about taking better care of yourself. The only thing I don't want you to do is I don't want you to go out here feeling badly, okay? Because your part two is weaker than your part one. Because in America today, that happens 93% of the time. Uh, obviously, this instrument has been validated in every way that you can do validity studies over 40 plus years. Uh, it has passed muster with all of those validity studies that make sure that it's not helping, uh, hurting any protected population. Uh, it has been validated in 16 different cultures. Uh, it has also been validated to have a reliability validation that says that there is a high, high plausibility when you start describing for a person what one of these interpretations means that they will resonate with that and they will affirm that's being true of them. And then when we come in and do the work that Jason described to you, we can give you generic numbers that will get you started in terms of making a better understanding about the people that you're bringing in or bringing up through your organization, the teams that you're creating. In addition to, to making those kinds of assessments about what you're doing in terms of bringing in generically, we would like to move forward in creating kind of like those green bars that, uh, that Jason just uh, put up here, where we'll create customized templates based on best performers. And so in one of the main community hospitals in Houston at Memorial Hermann, in one hospital they've got 84 hiring templates that are customized to the best performers in those uh, particular workplaces. And so uh, we will end up having the capacity to do a concurrent validity study on every single job that we uh, uh, look at and work with. The first piece of data I'm going to take you through is a Memorial Hermann piece of data. It is a, the, uh, the results of a three-year study, a three-year study that they conducted in their healthcare uh, environment in Houston, Texas. During that three years, they hired about 5,775 people using this instrument. Uh, at that point, uh, Memorial Hermann 
uh, puts their people through a fairly rigorous performance evaluation scale that has five layers to it. Uh, I've taught college for 25 years. I call those people in Texas hard graders. But they believe if you grade hard, kind of like what you were talking about, Don, you'll raise the bar on people and incentivize your best people. And so on their lowest level, on their lowest level of performance evaluation, they have people who are below standard. Those are people that it's going to be fine to have them evaporate out of the organization. In fact, they pretty much have concluded that they were bad hires to begin with. If this profile works, if this profile works, how many people out of 5,775 would it be okay for you to have fallen into that first category and still the <coughs> instrument have some credibility for you? You can think about that in your head for a moment. During this three-year period, there were no people in that first category. No people. Their second category are people that did not meet expectations and you would hope that there would not be many of those that would show up. There were 119 over a three year period. There were over 3,500 that met expectations, which is not easy to do at Memorial Hermann. There were over 1,500 that exceeded expectations. And there were even 47 people that they consider to be uniques. People that are so high above expectations that they feel like that they will kind of infiltrate and be that shiny apple that helps the whole barrel and they will help that whole organization. Now I'd like you to just look at that chart through the lens of something you already know. Statistics is based upon the conviction that human populations are evenly distributed. And so you get bell curves with 20% out on one end, 20% out on the other end, 60% at varying degrees in the middle. I believe that you can see from what's up there on the uh, screen right now that that is not standard deviation. That is not a normal bell curve. That is not the normal kind of flow of a population that you would experience. In fact, if you look at this closely, you will see that you've almost erased the entire left third of a normal bell curve. I'll say that again, you can chew on it. You've all but erased the normal left one-third of a bell curve. And so that material on the screen right now should say to you that this tool, at the very minimum, helps you define who's going to end up being a better person or give you ability to develop that and who may not end up in those categories. That is pretty powerful. <coughs> In this three-year study at Memorial Hermann, there were 800 people that were terminated. Now, if you go back to the previous screen, most of those people were not terminated for, 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 for performance issues. It was primarily behavioral issues. But there were 800. Out of that 800, 694 of the terminations had red flags on the Hartman profile that said you better look a little bit more closely, you might want to look a little bit more closely. There's stuff here that kind of compels you to look a little bit more closely. In other words, I'm saying that 694 times there might have been avoidable events if following Jim Collins' good to great, people had waited one more day maybe until a really good candidate came along and they didn't just take the warm body because they thought they had to. At Memorial Hermann 128 times, there were people that had four out of 10 red flags on the basic scale that they looked like. Now that doesn't make sense. Why would you hire someone with four out of 10 red flags? Uh, but that's life, isn't it? And we see that every day. In fact, I would tell you that in this Memorial Hermann data, there were 16 people that had 10 out of 10 red flags and they hired them anyway.